Celiac disease is actually a permanent intolerance to the wheat storage protein, gluten. For some reason that we don't understand, our immune system uh, sees gluten as something bad. And the immune response that results causes injury to the lining of our small intestine. With the advent of the new screening tests that we have, we're finding that it's actually pretty common. What triggers the initial event that causes the disease, no one knows. And that's something that we here at Stanford are trying to investigate. Genetics, very important. So if you have a first degree relative that has celiac disease, then your chances of developing celiac disease is about one in 22. And there's two genes that are associated with celiac disease, and they're present in about uh, 97 to 99 percent of the cases of celiac disease. The caveat is that just having these genes doesn't mean that you're going to get the disease. In terms of symptoms, people with celiac disease could be completely asymptomatic and will only have some extra intestinal manifestations like anemia or osteopenia. Classically, the symptoms tend to be bloating and some people have diarrhea, other people will, uh, will experience constipation. If you have symptoms of celiac disease and you ignore them, one of the things that happens is that there's a lot of injury to the small intestine and that's where we absorb a lot of really important nutrients. Also, unchecked inflammation could predispose you to malignancies. How do we make the diagnosis of celiac disease? The blood tests are basically looking for some of the antibodies that the body makes when it's trying to fight gluten. The gold standard is still taking biopsies. In celiac disease, what happens is that the villi, which are finger-like projections where you absorb nutrients, are destroyed. So we look for inflammation, we look for destruction of the villi, and this, in combination with the blood test, gives us a good sense of whether you have the disease or not. In terms of treatment, the only effective therapy is gluten exclusion with a gluten-free diet which is very effective. It works for about 90% of the patients, but it's not perfect and it's very difficult to adhere to. And it's very important if you're diagnosed with celiac disease to meet with a dietitian who has expertise in celiac disease because there's a lot of hidden sources of gluten and it takes very small amounts, probably a few breadcrumbs is enough to trigger the inflammation. So you have to be really educated and really be meticulous. I think the future holds a lot of promise. There's a lot of interest and a lot of research going on in the areas. I'm hopeful that with the information we're going to gain, we'll get more non-invasive tests to monitor the disease and also uh, to diagnose it, hopefully. And also there'll probably be more treatment options. And it's conceivable that we may someday have a vaccine that would prevent this, or at least know what the triggers are so that we could hopefully prevent the disease going forward.